to discuss the real issues affecting the Tasman nations, this is Trad Tasman Talk, jointly produced by the Unshackled.net and RightMinds.nz. Now, here's Tim Wilms in Australia and Dewa DeBoer in New Zealand. Great to see you again, Dewey. I hope you're all right. Uh, yeah, thanks uh, for ha having me back on the show, and it's good to speak with you again and be live on the air. Uh, yeah, it's but yeah, it was a wild day, absolutely wild day today. Um, thankfully, I was all right, um, and everyone I was with, uh, no trouble at all. Uh, so we had the new conservative co-leader from Christchurch, Helen Houghton, who was going to speak uh, at the uh, Let Women Speak event, and so we were there to... to uh, escort her, make sure she was all right. And uh, yeah, it, as it turned out, it, uh, it, it was basically a rescue mission. Uh, there was a, a massive mob there, an angry hate mob that had been uh, created by uh, uh, the media and politicians here in New Zealand. And um, yeah, we, we just got, you know, we were working our way through there when uh, Kelly J was uh, assaulted and dragged away by the police, basically. And all of the the other women who were there to speak were were left behind in the middle of the uh, of this gazebo, and uh, uh, they were, yeah, uh, you have basically had all of the uh, the deranged, uh, the deranged communist mob uh, pouring in on them, trying to rip the signs uh, out of their hands. Uh, someone had let, let women speak signs. They had little badges uh, with you know the, the proper definition of a woman, uh, proper definition of a woman, uh, and. Uh, yeah, they were just left in the middle there. Uh, one woman was, was struggling with, with uh, the flag she was holding. It had five or six people you know, jumping on her. She was quite a, a small uh, small lady, and you could barely see her under the under the mob there. So we just jumped in there and pushed everyone away, made as much room as we could. And, uh, yeah, I just looked around. I sent you a, like an eight-second clip of uh, everything completely surrounded. Uh, and Helen, uh, you know, talked to the women uh, there as best as she could and, you know, encouraged them to come with her. Uh, and we just made some made as much space as we could and there were about five five of us guys there uh, five of us men who had come and uh, we escorted them out safely uh, and that was basically that was basically all that all that happened uh from from my perspective there in in uh at that event and yeah just actually very very sad to see uh, it's like a the death of feminism, basically. I never thought I'd be sad to see feminism die, but it actually felt like yeah, because uh, you're it was quite a, a disgusting carrying member of the patriarchy. Watch. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm, I wasn't there for women's rights, uh, I, but but like you know, we could. Uh, hey, uh, <laughs> it was just, it was absolute madness, uh, and that's why they were targeted, right? Is like the the feminists who who have said, well, the revolution's gone far enough, right? Let's pause the revolution. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, the comments on the beard. Uh, the there, yeah, the, and and these feminists are like, well, the revolution's gone far enough, right? We've got women's rights. We need to protect women's rights, and 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 they want to keep that. But obviously, the revolution isn't going to stop. Uh, the revolution keeps going. It's moved on to the the trans the trans agenda, which which uh, properly understood is basically a transhuman agenda, right? It's a, a elimination of uh, women, uh, the elimination of men, any distinctions between the two. Uh, and, uh, you know, that you basically, uh, feminism created a more gynocratic, gynocentric society. And so to fit into that, you know, you have, uh, these men who wish to naturally rise up to their place in the hierarchy and they become women. So you basically have transvestites. And, and so the women, the women all have to bow down to the transvestites because it's a, a gynocentric uh, society. And they, uh, yeah, just, it was just, just actually sad to see. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I just almost lost for words um, just watching uh, such an, just watching a hate mob. I've never seen it in my life. I've been at many protests, uh, dealt with communist freaks and, and pedophile crazies and all of these nasty people before. Uh, I've never seen them this angry, never seen them this worked up at feminists. Uh, it was just like, I, it made me feel sick. And I never thought that I'd be like sick at, at watching feminism die, but it's like being replaced with a far more horrible monster. Uh, what happened in Auckland today, it uh, made uh, made what happened in Melbourne last Saturday uh, extremely civil by uh, comparison. I uh, yeah. will play your uh, footage, which is just the, yeah, the, the, the crowd, the mob 
the zombies, whatever you want to call them, basically invading the uh, gazebo. <laughs> I, uh, a couple of people there filming didn't want to risk uh, too long on my phone uh, to keep my wits about me there, uh, and yeah, just 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 trying to 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 keep an eye on these poor women who were they were horrified they were shocked. Um, we had had a woman who you know we had a woman who we helped get out of there and she was um, she was shaken up quite badly, uh, and then another one uh, was actually a Muslim lady you know with her hijab and everything on she was. She was basically sobbing in tears, shaking. She 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 said she'd been in the the police protests in Cairo, uh, you know, like the Arab Spring in Cairo in in Egypt that she came from. She said she'd never felt so afraid in her life. She she didn't feel afraid when she was part of these protests against the government and the police in in Cairo. But here in New Zealand, she genuinely felt afraid for her life, and she was she was just she couldn't handle it um, because there were no police there. Uh, they had. Uh, I th if you've seen, sorry, I didn't send through a clip. I haven't been able to find just a short clip of of you know Kelly J Keen being taken away by the police. They've put I've the got police a I've got a own footage and, here. Yeah, so uh, so uh, before you play that, but basically that's you've got police there, and then they had like seven other police that stayed behind, and we talked with them before we went in. We were like, well, "What's going on? There's supposed to be be police here," and they were like, "Well, we they didn't give us any resources. There's just a bunch of us standing here, and they were standing around the edge of it." And we said, how do we get in? You know, they, they were sort of like, well, just go for it, right? There's nothing we can do. Um, get out, get out, go and get who you can, and that's it. And, uh, do you think they that washed their, they washed their hands of it. I believe that was deliberate, absolutely. I mean, they knew this was going to happen. They had the media and politicians creating a hate mob, uh, night, you know, three nights in a row at least, or, or, or two nights in a row at least on, on, this, on the TV. And the police basically is like, well, uh, the media and, uh, and, and the government have created this. Like, why should we? Who cares, right? We'll wash our hands of this, they, and that's what they did, and they washed yeah. their hands of it, and, and it was the it was the total riot. Well, why don't we meet one of the the leaders of this mob, uh, Shanil Lal, who's a a they them but a biological male who told one news breakfast yesterday that uh, uh, he. He was going to, to protest, uh, despite saying that uh, he feared for his life. This is the first time I have feared for my own safety. Mm. But truthfully, I will not sit at home as Nazis and Tevs steal my right to be who I am. I'm not sitting at home. So although I'm incredibly scared of being there, I will be there. I think the fundamental issue that we have with Posey Parker is that people are looking at her event in isolation from everything else that is happening in Aotearoa. You look at the amount of queer hatred that has been in our country. Last year, Rainbow Youth got burned down in an arson attack. Um, Glory of Greymouth, a pink queer church was vandalised and a rainbow flag was burnt and staked in their lawn. There are protests outside drag story hours every week. A school is being shut down because they can no longer practice conversion therapy. Queer hatred is at an all-time high. So when you bring someone like Posey Parker into our country, what she does is that it normalizes the hatred towards queer people and it emboldens people to act on their hate speech. And extra music there for dramatic effect. Yeah, the dramatic music. Yeah, uh, I, I, think, uh, I think after what I saw yeah. today, I have a complete understanding as to why people might hate queer people. Um, I, it makes total sense to me now, having experienced what they're like. Um, yeah, the this they them demonic uh, creature. I mean, I saw him. Uh, he was up there, right in the thick of it, not scared at all. Uh, you know, wearing bright pink. And, oh yeah, that's not a look in here. Fearing for his life. Yeah, fearing for his life, absolutely. Um, I told him to repent. He looks absolutely petrified, doesn't he? Yeah, and and just the videos don't do. Uh, they, they don't do justice to the insane noise. Um, like it's a, uh, how you might imagine some kind of like Molek worshiping festival uh, would have gone like in terms of the absolute noise that they generate. Like uh, uh, 
it's it, almost eardrum bursting. Like I was walk, I was just walking around with my my ears covered the whole time uh, because of just how absolutely uh, just just noise. It was just 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 constant uh, uh, ear eardrum bursting noise the whole time. Uh, and you know, so like I said, I, I was just saying before you played that video, I saw him. Uh, you know, got up got up to him to tell him to repent, which I did, but. I, I don't think anybody could hear anything. Uh, he did. He did. He didn't look. He didn't look. He didn't look at me. Uh, so uh, we'll see. Uh, probably recognized me, but uh, I did my best because I did tell people beforehand. I said if I run into Chanel, I'm going to tell him to repent. Um, so just so that the people who uh, who are uh, watching know that I did do my best to do that when when I had the opportunity. Uh, so he's the the, the leader. Uh, we call we call we call him a, a he because he is a a biological male well, he's he is a man and he's not he's not like a, a tranny or anything like that he's sort of but he's he's a bit of a transvestite basically he does a little bit of he dresses a bit like a woman uh and that's 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 about it oh, well, he's he, like he, wearing, he a, wearing a woman a, wearing a woman yeah. costume is basically what he yeah. does Mo moonlights as a model yeah we're, and um, there's also a, a columnist for the new zealand herald so hardly silenced and also a <laughs> more well, student the, you, you we witnessed like institutional power like what do these freaks do when they have institutional power and like how much how much effort did they pour into into this uh like stopping half a dozen feminists from speaking uh like that's that's their that's what they do and the, when they've got all the power in the world uh that's that's what they feel threatened by um so uh, i'm not i, I mean th that doesn't look to me like a movement that has uh that's on the cusp of victory or that knows what it's possibly going to do with all of, all of the power that it's got if you have all of the power in the world every corporation every institution every media company every politician everyone bows down to you uh you know and and these poor little women trying to talk about feminism i uh, completely wiped off the face of the earth uh i'm yeah i'm certainly not afraid of them uh just the the only thing you really do need to be afraid of is basically is is demented freaks uh rampaging around uh it's it's sort of the uh, uh i think um mystery grove talks about communism says that the ideology of communism is window dressing it's basically just freaks uh who want to destroy everything and make being good illegal uh, that's that's kind of that's all they want to do um so yeah it, it just it's it was it was it was just very very sad to watch today and and to, and and to see these women uh absolutely shaken up and terrified for their lives because uh, they, they were absolutely terrified for their lives uh we had if, if we didn't if we didn't come in there i'm not sure they would have been able to get out of that mob right they had to take had to have half a dozen men you know christian men had to come in there uh christian men who don't care much about women's rights had to go in there and rescue them uh what's is it just i don't yeah I just 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 sad the problem with the gazebo is that it's in the middle of what's what was the name of the, <clears throat> the park again well albert park and it's not in the middle of the park it's actually it's actually on the edge of the it's on the edge of the park um it looks so, easy to surround yeah it was fairly easy to surround there's nothing in the park there that's not that easy that, that's easy to that's you know difficult to surround but we've i've i've done protests in the past where you, where you get these mobs that come up like you can find places in in the city there which are more uh like cornered but then you just get cornered in and you get surrounded by the mob i've done that before too so you get they, they'll, they'll corner you in and and scream at you for hours but at least you can hold your ground because they can't surround you um but they had the idea was i believe the idea was basically it was supposed to be a police line right it was supposed to be a police line i didn't say any it was, uh, but there was police no police line. line there was no there was no police line right it was supposed to be a police line uh, you, that's 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 what you have at events like this especially when you've got massive mobs threatened uh you just you just have a police line it doesn't take much and i that's the other thing too like i've been at protests before too where it's like if i turn up they'll they'll send a police line uh they'll send a police line but because that i think because they knew that these were just women these were just harmless women who would just get you know beaten to, into submission uh the police didn't bother it's like well who cares right if you have uh 50 50 guys who are who are you know gonna fight back uh, then 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 they'll give you a police line <clears throat> but when you've just got you know a dozen feminists who who uh are up against a raging mob of transvestites well yeah they don't care well, let's look at the moment where Kelly J. Keen, she was assaulted with that red substance, which turned out to be tomato soup. 
Now that reminded me of uh, the pieing of Anita Bryant, who was uh, the Save Our Children uh, advocate against uh, gay rights in the the 1970s. She was pied quite forcefully in the in the in the face by a, a homosexual activist, and so it remind it reminded me of that. Uh, sorry, I'm not not familiar with that event, so I can't. Uh, I think the thing the thing that that it reminded uh, me of was you, it was as a copy. It was basically a, the the soup the 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 tomato soup is a a trend that was started by the Extinction Rebellion uh, people. They we poured over the paintings. Well, we don't paint. Yeah, so with, this is an paint, yeah. Well, they've used soup as well, so I think that's that's basically soup or paint or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, yeah, how did she get in so easily? I think so. I actually recognized, like, no, I, I, I just often I saw pictures of, of that woman. We actually saw her in the car park, um, and she's wearing like a pink, like dressed up to look like like a feminist. Like she was dressed up to look like an old school feminist. So that's how she basically uh, snuck her way in there. Yeah. Though when at the the Melbourne one, it's it was very hard to like. Obviously, there was like the, clearly the the people watching let women speak and then there was the, the the socialists because a lot of them in melbourne were turfs trans exclusionary radical feminists mm -hmm. second wave feminists uh they looked quite similar uh, to the 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 socialist well we're not sure if they yeah. were women <laughs> no so, exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. They, i found it um yeah they, quite, we had we actually had this at the protest we, we, we had we had People would come up to me and be like, oh, I'd be like, oh, it's okay, we have to get these women out, you know, to sorry. And then people would say, Oh, yeah, like like the real ones, like real women. I'd be like, Yeah, yeah, real women. <laughs> what did Ricky so, Vijayas uh, Ricky Vijayas called them it, like when he said he's into women, the old fashioned one, the one ones with vaginas. Yeah, well, <laughs> sorry. Uh yeah, I saw somebody mentioned here about this woman being intersex or something, which it, they they um most that's most usually mostly made up. Um, possibly someone who was born with slightly uh, deformed genitalia and had surgery to to you know use the the working ones. That's usually what the intersex people are like. So, uh, I was, she basically, basically, she, I mean, absolutely, she would be a woman. Uh, I suspect then, if that was the case, um, and and they just kind of add in this this intersex stuff to kind of give themselves a a way in to the LGBT the, the queer crap there. So it's like you have to, if you it's like a half of all LGBT people are bisexual women who only have sex with men so that's that's kind of yeah this is this is the so, thing there's so, a lot so of the, you got to come up with some crap to, you got to put some come up with some crap to make yourself uh part of their community so uh i wouldn't put any weight on that they just they they, they just make that stuff up to fit in uh, to fit in with the crowd yeah. um yeah but it was uh i've uh so uh one of new zealand's uh, uh most well-known economists actually michael Rodell, commented today uh on on this as well and the police, so specifically, where he's talking about this, uh, he described today, uh, and I'll, I'll use his uh, his term here. He described today uh, as a, another step closer to a late Weimar thugocracy. Uh, so that was sort of late stage Weimarism, uh, is is what uh, a well known economist in New Zealand is describing what we saw today. That's probably maybe the closest uh, to it. You, you basically have. Uh, insane, insane uh, decadence uh, and 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 uh, thugs that are endorsed at the highest levels, uh, and you only see that when a when a society is starting to fall apart. So, uh, at some point, the, at some point, Myanmar collapses. So that's that's why there's no, yeah, you, we we will rebuild from the ashes, uh, and yeah, but it's just sad to watch everything get ripped apart like this. Uh, Alice Wonderland says, I can't see any NSN, meaning National Socialist Network. There is a, well, a white nationalist group in New Zealand, which uh, a couple of members were there in Auckland. It's no, so that's that's what I thought. So actions, I, I thought that because I saw a couple of them come in at the end uh, when we were working our way out the gazebo. They were just they were, they were just coming in there, and I thought, hey, great. Uh, this is what a disaster. But um action action zelandia put out a statement this afternoon where they denounced uh the any association with that because action action zelandia said they don't endorse women's rights and uh as of the Azov battalion because these guys were wearing as of ukraine like ukraine hats so so action zelandia is anti-ukraine and and anti-feminist so they 
they uh, so they weren't weren't their guys. Um, and the photos as well. One of the guys is brown as well. So nobody knows. Uh, there are insane conspiracy theories out there from the left on who these guys actually were. Um, but but nobody knows who they nobody knows who they were. Uh, all we know is they were basically dressed up like uh, as of Ukrainian as of uh, battalion guys. So. Uh, New Zealand probably a, probably an, an, an elaborate prank. New Zealand doesn't have a swastika ban yet. Uh, no, because the well, you can't do the swastika ban in New Zealand because the mongrel mob, which is a a, a Maori gang, they have the swastika. They they tattoo it onto their faces and stuff. So the swastika in New Zealand is a is a a cultural treasure of Maori. So you can't you can't ban it because it would be challenged by the Waitangi Tribunal. Uh, so there will be there wouldn't be a swastika ban ever in New Zealand. Um, it's been appropriated by the locals. Uh, now let's have a look at Kelly J. Keane's escape. This is from a, a different angle, which shows just how well her security. Uh, I saw. I think it was Colin in the in the chat saying, "Oh, would um, private the no private, private security." No. Yeah, it, uh, there wouldn't be enough, I don't think. No matter yeah, that how. was the issue. They had some private security that backed out. Um, they, you, she did have some security. Uh, you could see one or two guys there. In the end, it was the police that they got her out and some volunteers. Um, yeah. If if they had planned this a little bit better, they could have had a, a line of men who would have turned up. Because in the end, like the only men who turned up were were Christians. Like we had a bunch of Presbyterians and Roman Catholics trying to protect these feminists. Uh, and uh, you know we could have organized a, a proper line to, to hold the barricade because they did have some kind of barricade set up. They got knocked down, and there was nobody. Like you would have had a police line holding the barricades in place, right? And they could have asked for volunteers, could ask for some men to come and hold up the barricades while the women could do their their let women speak thing. But yeah, it, I think in the end it was probably the best for the best that it turned out the way that it did uh, because everyone just gets to see how hateful the mob is. Uh, Kelly Kelly J. Keen gets a massive amount of publicity from this uh, global publicity. I suspect everybody hates New Zealand a little bit more internationally. People see that New Zealand is uh, an absolutely insane country. Uh, well, that's what yeah. she called it, uh, an insane country. <laughs> uh, we're a joke. We're a joke country. We're absolutely insane. Even uh, without just the internet now. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's got, it's taken on a life of its own, um, and it's absolutely insane. Yeah. But uh, very. It was a sad. It was it was a very sad today. Just very very sad. Uh, next time, get Posey to speak at a Lebanese church, Rally the Boys for Protection. Let's see how tough they are. I'm not sure if you saw what happened when some gay socialists decided to protest <laughs> outside a Maronite Catholic church yeah. in Western Sydney, uh, where Mark Latham was, was speaking. They were swamped by 500 members supporters of christian lives matter and uh, as i said in my article i those gay socialists uh, f a f o <laughs> yeah 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 and and this is in, in such a case like if 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 they'd wanted to run off a, a better event that was that was properly protected they could have had you know uh, dozens and dozens of good christian men perhaps hundreds uh, so, uh sorting you know sorting out uh a, a good uh, support network there, but that's that was yeah. Uh, this leads me to the kind of I guess the final thing I wanted to say on this is sort of like the, the death of feminism, and I wanted to see that uh, wanted to say that that like the what they really what they really need, and what I hope many of these feminists realize now is that uh, that they they need the the truth. They've got basically they're stuck in a in a spiritual uh, limbo between like the demonic hell. Uh, uh, mob and and uh, you know and, and Christian side the the side of heaven the side of good and hopefully they can see that you know we we we're willing to welcome them uh, and uh, if they realize that it's actually all about God and Christianity uh, and uh, Jesus Christ that so they can find uh, faith and salvation uh, from uh, uh, this this horrible world that now hates them uh, I think that's 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 really the only way forward for them if they if they want to admit that for them for them that it, that it's over right the 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 90s liberal dream is over it's dead uh, and and I hope that that they will instead of falling into despair uh, that they will realize that 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 there is uh, that there is truth and hope and justice.
Yeah, so now I'll play yeah Kelly J's great escape. We'll call it great because who knows what would have happened if she didn't get out. <laughs> So seeing the yeah the, the the mob like all around her like you see how just how uh, dangerous and and threatening this situation would have been. Yep, they the she I, I saw a tweet from her just before I hopped on the show here that she said she genuinely felt felt afraid. She felt like if she tripped up and, and fell on the ground that she wouldn't have gotten back up and that you know her kids would have lost their mother and her husband would have lost his wife. Uh, she she thought she was going to die in that moment if she if she uh, tripped up, which very well uh, perhaps perhaps not. Perhaps they would have been merciful, but I don't know. It's like I said, it was a hate mob. Uh, absolutely, absolutely horrific stuff. Uh, and and I have never I've been involved in protest and semi riot situations here in New Zealand over the years, going all the way back to Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux, uh, and I've never seen anything like this. Never seen anything like this in my life. And uh, she's cancelled her Wellington Let Women Speak event tomorrow uh, because basically the police said, yeah, we're not going to be able to protect you, which mm -hmm. is basically like, we give up. Like, yeah, well, they don't want, they don't care. Uh, like I said at the beginning, it's not that they can't. They could pull out the resources at the drop of a hat if they need them. You know, if they need to stomp down some uh, lockdown protesters, they are Yeah, like force, even no Melbourne worries. managed they to keep the peace. <laughs> They can stomp your head in, no problem if they need to. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I uh, see so Origin asking here, where was her husband? Well, that was the first thing about feminism, right? She doesn't need her husband. Uh, but as it turns out, no, she doesn't uh, call herself men, a feminist. Ah, uh, well, okay, maybe. Okay, because I, I, I have heard saying there's people she's slightly more conservative. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. She's she's, um, yeah. Like I said, it's it's you know, it's not it's not safe for women out there. Uh, just like in in the old days, you know, there's a reason why we set up these systems to protect women because uh, once everybody's equal, suddenly women are not so safe anymore. And was your wife Amy with you? No, no, she wasn't there, and and with she was home with the kids, um, and cut the other guys left their wives and and children at home as well. But well, we knew that it wasn't we knew it was going to be ugly. We just didn't think it was going to be going to be that ugly. So it wasn't safe for them to even turn up, let alone speak. No, no, that's right. Uh, any, no, no, no woman, no woman got to speak. It was uh, total silence. Uh, no, no women speaking at all. Just like you might expect, uh, you know, what happens when men are in charge. <laughs> it was a, it was a men's only event, uh, and I, that. So that's why I said from at least probably from Posey's aspect, from the from the from the feminist aspect, is like it was in some sense a victory for them because yeah, you could see that that there there's no space for women in the public sphere anymore. Uh, it's over for them. Now, obviously, uh, we had uh, she after her Melbourne uh, event, uh, she had two final uh, stops. Uh, the first one was in Hobart, uh, the capital of uh, Tasmania, and uh, she was, well, at least peacefully shouted down at that event. She wasn't uh, attacked. Uh, she declared Hobart to be the worst city she had ever been to. And after today, uh, this uh, meme was going around uh, Twitter, supposedly mocking her, uh, Hobart is the worst place I've been to, and has Homer Simpson as Autoria saying, "Worst place you've been so far." And well, at least yeah, that's that's what that that's 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 what they uh, that's what the trans cult uh, sees as a win. Uh, if uh, if 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 you get to see how horrible they are, uh, they get to feel good about themselves. Uh, that's that's really 
And uh, in Canberra, uh, we saw now independent Senator Lydia Thorpe try to storm the <laughs> storm the stage and got uh, tackled uh, see that. by yeah, beautiful. By, by police, which, uh, I mean, it's just the latest in a, a litany of disgraces, well, how she's disgraced herself in, in public, uh, Lydia Thorpe. So it, it wasn't, she didn't reach a new low. She's, 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 she's already very low in terms of her conduct. All right. And, so, um, Sorry, I've, I'm I'm going to wrap up my appearance here for you. I know I've given this update, but uh, it's been a long day for me. But um, just just letting everybody in the chat know as well, um, I will be out in a couple of minutes, and uh, Tim will get on with the election news. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll give it a few minutes for some last comments and, and any other questions. And uh, there was obviously that campaign to get her barred from the the country, but. Yeah. Uh, Australians might uh, might not understand that in New Zealand, the immigration minister doesn't have the ultimate power. It's up to the immigration officials. Yes, uh, and there were several legal challenges, uh, which usually fail um, because basically what the immigration department decides is, is, is what it is. Um, and so a lot of departments in New Zealand are basically neutral or supposed to be neutral uh, where, the, where the ministers can't directly interfere in operational affairs, like make decisions. Um, but there is, a, there is a certain threshold. There are certain issues where if the um, immigration officials don't believe that they can make a, a clear decision based on the law, then they can refer it to the minister. Uh, but in this case, they said, well, there was no reason. There was, there was nothing about her that, that they had any legal concerns about. There was no legal way to stop her. So that's why they, it, it wasn't referred to the minister. And obviously here in Victoria, uh, we had our Premier Dan Andrews raise the transgender flag at the government offices. And on this coming Monday is uh, D-Day uh, for Moira Redeeming to see whether her state leader is successful in expelling her from the party room. It, it, he doesn't have the power to expel her from the party itself, just the, the party room. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's uh, putting himself like put, like uh, deciding this is the the thing that he wants to stake his his leadership yeah, on the hill that he's dying on hopefully because he says he wants to lead a modern inclusive liberal party <laughs> yeah and and this what like in New Zealand as well so the immigration minister joined the hate mob by saying you know she's disgusting uh, horrible we we condemn her go and and go after her so yeah he had MPs going after um, the national party has their mouth shut you know they they're uh they are complete garbage probably the worst like if i were to say if there's any party that in parliament that 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 is the worst i would say it would be the national party in new zealand simply because they should they should do better and some of them will say better in private um, but they won't do it in public so uh that makes them the worst of the worst in my eyes uh, Chris know, well, nothing, nothing worse than someone someone who knows uh, what good is and who knows that they could do good and refuses to do it, I think it's far worse than the people who are just simply evil and, and straight up about it. Uh, Chris Luxon, the national leader, said that, yeah, he supports the uh, trans agenda but uh, supported her coming in. Yeah, that, 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 was, that's, that was Chris Luxon. Uh, just absolutely disgusting comments from him there. You know, oh, yeah, let her come in, um, but, you know, go and, go and get her trannies and go, and, and go after her. Um, so you yeah, asking about the ACT Party. The ACT Party was, yeah, did they do like, oh, it's all about free speech and, and you get to counter protest. They have the same party idea, uh, condemn the mob. Yep, he condemned the mob today, but like when it, in the lead up to it, they, they I'm like, oh, let's just keep a safe distance, you know, we'll just keep a safe distance. And then after, uh, afterwards, we'll look at how, you know, the bodies are scattered on the ground and we'll kind of make a comment based on, based on that. Yeah. He wants his cake and to eat it too. That's basically David Seymour in a nutshell. And and you're not uh, like I know that some of these let women speak advocates say oh we're not uh, anti-trans we're we're pro women but you're you're you're, you're open I'm like, like I'm anti I think it's it's, it's good to be anti bad things like we shouldn't be afraid to be anti bad things uh, so we should absolutely be anti trans uh, yeah but uh, I don't care that's what they they people want to say that they're not anti trans like, oh, it doesn't help them at all uh, so yeah just 
uh, somebody saying so. Yeah, and obviously you had uh, the Green Party were there, the Labour Party were there, you know, supporting the the mob, the hate mob. Um, and somebody saying here that perhaps Young Act were there. Were they part of the hate mob too? I don't know. Um, or were they standing up for women? That would be a change. Uh, um, yeah, I don't have enough information on that. I, I, it was crazy. I've seen tweets and videos from people I know uh, there. I just didn't see them. It was just, it was total chaos, complete riot. Um, uh, it was, you know, I ran into quite a few people that I knew, um, but you just couldn't get people together. Um, and, uh, and, you know, if you did, as soon as you, as soon as you got uh, some good people together, you'd just be accosted uh, by the mob and you'd have to move on. So just, yeah, just absolutely insane. Well, thank you for jumping on uh, in the middle of uh, this stream. Uh, the, there's only been 10% of the, the vote counted <laughs> in almost two hours. So I thought our VC was slow, like uh, Maricopa County in uh, Arizona, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the New South Wales Electoral Commission. Yeah, and they're, they're all going to go home at, at 10.30 at night, uh, which is in about uh -huh. three hours. So, wow. yeah, they're just... Maybe they'll have some uh, ballot drops uh, at the last minute and just sort out who wins before they go home. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I'm glad I've been able to divert you from uh, the very slow count for just a little bit. Um, I'm uh, going to head off. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, and obviously chat. we'll see everyone. talk a bit more closer to, to your your election where uh, your new Prime Minister, Chris Chris Hipkins, it's the Battle of mm -hmm. the, the Chris's, is basically his strategy is to undo all of Jacinta's policies in hope. Yeah, exactly. He's like, he's a yeah. populist uh, populist Labourite. Uh, he's he's um, he's turning everything back from from everything that was unpopular from Jacinda, uh, which has basically destroyed the National Party's chances at the moment, because the National Party well, they were kind of like, oh, we're opposed to all of the stuff that Jacinda says is bad. So that you know, for all the stuff Jacinda wants that everyone hates, we're opposed to that. But now that Chris Hipkins has has flipped on all of that, um, what have they got? So it'll be interesting. We will catch up uh, closer to the election. We may have an election night stream again as well, um, and so I may be back on the show before then, uh, or not, uh, or, or at else at election uh, night. So very good uh, to see everybody in the chat, and and good night to you all. Good night. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of Trad Tasman Talk. To keep up with the latest real news and analysis from the Tasman Nations, visit theyoungshackles.net and rightminds.nz.